G'day, I'm Melissa Shannon, founder of Digital Scrapbooking HQ.com, and I'm here with you today in the Project Life app. Now, back in 2020, the Project Life app was updated, and I think it's well time that I should do an updated tutorial on how to use it. I love the Project Life app to create pages that I can print that have photos and stories and I can add them to my family photo album or I can print them as a photo book. So when you first open the Project Life app you'll notice that there are several options. You've got create, library, order and question. Let's start with create which is where we make our pages. The next prompt is to choose a collage page an editorial page or a 4x6 print. A collage page is a page that combines photo spots and spots for journaling and decoration. An editorial page looks something more like a magazine layout and a 4x6 print is a, well, 4x6 print. Let's start off with a collage page which is what people mostly are talking about when they talk about project life. The default layout is laid out in design A, which is four 4x6 photos and then four 3x4 photo spots. Now all of these dimensions I'm mentioning assume that the finished page will be printed at 12x12 12 12 inches. But if you're printing at home and say you're in Australia, if we print this page out on an A4 sheet of paper, the end size will really be more like 8x8 8 8 inches. So it's about three quarters of the size. Anyway, we don't need to worry about printing quite yet. Let's get started with our page. So the first thing we are going to do is choose the layout design that we want. You can click on the layouts button at the bottom of the page and you can choose all kinds of options. You can change your background color. You can change whether you want rounded or square corners and you can choose from a whole range of designs. You can also choose a six by eight design and strangely enough, they are six by eight inches in total. So I'm gonna choose a six by eight design for this page. And then I can choose to insert either a photograph or a card. That's the other icon here. When you click on the card icon, you're brought to the pick a card kit section. There's a huge selection of card kits made by graphic designers that you can choose from. Just going to choose from one of my favorite kits for this page and I'm going to add this card. Some cards are decorative like this one for example but some cards have journaling spots. That's where you can type text. There's many options for your text. You can change the color, the font, the font size, the line spacing, the vertical offset, and the justification. So whether it's aligned left, center, right, or justified, meaning it's stretched across the whole width of the line. Now I can continue to add more photos. You can pinch and drag to resize and position the photo. Or more journaling spots or decorated cards. When I finish my design, I can still move things around. I can swap items into different spots. I can go back and edit my text. And if I am not happy with something, I can always drag it into the bin and replace it 
with a new photo or card. With photographs, I can also edit the brightness, the contrast, the saturation, and I can rotate my image. I can also click this yellow icon to edit it in Pick Tap Go, which is a more full featured photo editing software that you can get on your device. At this point, I can even choose to change the layout and any of the other features I've set up along the way. I can also adjust photos by pinching and dragging them to get everything in the best location. If you want to swap the location of a card or photo, tap and hold and then drag it across to the other card spot. They will swap places You can also tap and hold and drag your photo or card into the bin. Just drag it onto the trash icon. Now when I've finished editing my page, it'll be automatically saved. And in fact, it'll be automatically saved any time I have to stop working on it. To see it again, I can go into my library and then click Pages. And you can see under 6x8, here is my page. Now when I've finished creating the page and I'm happy with how it looks, I can click the Share button to share it on social to export it as an image or an editable backup. If we choose to export it as an image, I can save it to my camera roll. I can update the page info. And I can adjust the date so that I can file the project by date. Your pages are saved under categories, whether they are a 4x6 print, a 6x8 page, square editorial, square collage, plus you can also set them up into folders. Any pages that have space in them will be classed as unfinished and they'll be kept in your In Progress tab. You can also subscribe to the Project Life Online Backup if you would like to have your pages backed up. That's also a great way to sync them across your different devices. Say if you want to start a page on your phone where all your photos are and then you want to finish the journaling on your iPad. Also in your library, you have access to a variety of kits that have decorative cards in them. Here's some I've bought over the years and you also have access to fonts. Here's the fonts that come included. You can also purchase additional fonts or you can install your own fonts by purchasing a little add-on. If you're based in the US, you can order your prints within the app. You can either order prints of pages or create a full book. I've not done that because I'm based in Australia, but I've heard great things about the quality. If you need any help with Project Life, they do have some video tutorials and FAQs and you can also contact them. At the time of this recording, they haven't updated their video tutorials, which is part of the reason I decided to record this video. And of course, you can always reach out to me with your questions in the comments below. I'd love to help if I can. Now, this has just been the quickest introduction to the Project Life app. I hope that it's been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about digital scrapbooking, please head to digitalscrapbookinghq.com.